Hi, welcome to Rhyme Math. Today I'm doing a series of videos on scatter plots and lines of best fit. So if we're going to do a line of best fit on a scatter plot, the first question is, what is a line of best fit? Now, a line of best fit is interesting because it is what it sounds like. It is a line that best fits the data. Now, there are a lot of ways that you could figure out a line of best fit. You could go on to Excel and say, hey, Excel, can you tell me what the line of best fit is? You could, there are mathematical equations. There are ma uh, by hand um, practices. Things where you trisect, find the, me um, the mean point of each and find the line through those. But what I really want to talk about is the uh, eyeball, <laughs> eyeball line of best fit. So we're going to use our eyes. We're just guesstimating. Every line of best fit is just guesstimating. All we're ever doing when we do a line of best fit is trying to figure out one line to represent them all. So in a line of best fit, I really think of this as having two criteria. The first criteria is that it generally, and I've got to really stress this word, generally splits the points. The reason I say generally is sometimes you have some points that are kind of outliers that may not fit well into your line of best fit. Um, and then the second is it should go in the direction of. Direction of the data. These are the two criteria you need when you are doing an eyeball line of best fit. So if we look at this first um, plot, there's really no correlation. This is really a scatter. As is this last one, these two, you could come up with a line of best fit, but it would be really rough. So I added those just to kind of discuss the idea that not everything has a line of best fit. Um, so we're going to focus on the other four. So if I look at these points, now I can count them up and see there's nine points. That doesn't really matter because I said generally spit, splits. So if I get my ruler going in the direction of the data, this point right here kind of becomes a little bit of an outlier. It doesn't mean I'm going to ignore it, but it means if I split the other eight and then move towards that outlier, because that's what an outlier is gonna do. It's gonna drop your line towards the outlier. I can then get my line of best fit. Okay. So you notice that this point touches the line, but since the point is really the center of the point, that point is not on the line. This is all good. Oftentimes, somebody wants to put a criteria, goes through points. That's not the case. It can go through a point or two, but it doesn't have to. When you look at a line of best fit, you're trying to find one line to rule them all. You're trying to find one line that represents the data in the best possible way. Think about grades. If you had a bunch of grades, let's say you had a lot of 60s and a lot of 80s, your average might be a 70 and you might be told, hey, you have a 70% in this class. You may have never gotten a 70, but this becomes your grade even though it's a grade you've never, ever earned. Same with the line of best fit. It's not about hitting points. It's about going in the direction of the points. Okay, for the second one, um, the most common mistake I'll see for this is people are like, okay, it has to go through the origin. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start at the origin and go from there. It can go through the origin. It doesn't actually have to go through the origin. So if I'm gonna go with my line of best fit, I'm gonna say, hey, my data is generally going this way. I'm going to come down to about the midpoint. Notice that you, you want to cluster on the four that are together. You're like, oh, they're all together. Nope, because these are all below, and that's not splitting the points. So you come just to the other side, and you're like, but I go through that point. But these are lower, and you're going to be a lot closer to these points. So we need to actually drop it a little bit more because these are lower. We're trying to split the points. We're not trying to go through points. In this line of best fit, you'll notice... I kind of do go through a point, but again, it doesn't matter. And notice I'm not going through the origin because that's not a criteria. Not every line goes through zero, zero. 
Not every line goes through data points. We're trying to find one line to represent them all. For this one, I'm gonna, these are so nicely parallel, I'm gonna do the parallel line right smack dab down the middle. Again, I'm not hitting the origin. Again, I'm not hitting any of the points. I'm, I'm splitting them. It's kind of like us versus them. That's the line in the sand. No points are touched in this line. The origin is not touched in this line. We are splitting the point, generally splits the data points. I guess I could do a whole word, a whole bunch of words here. Okay, generally splits the data points, direction of the data, not going through any points. That's not a criteria. For this one, again, we have this negative correlation. Negative correlation just means negative slope. Um, and it, oh, it is so tempting to go through these five points because they're in a perfect line, but there are two above and one below. So if I go strictly through those, I'm actually not splitting the points. I have to go just to the top of them. It's kind of like uh, bleachers they're sitting on. And I have to go a little bit above, even though there's a lot more points below right now, because if I go straight through them, I'm, I'm almost touching them. But to split the points, I have to take the fact that two are above, one is below. The two above is gonna kind of pull it. Now these two are a lot closer than this one, so maybe going, if we did actual distances with perpendicular lines, we would find that going smack through those five points would be the line of best fit. But in general, I kind of think of it more as the weighted for a simple eyeball test, not a more complicated one. There's two above, there's one below, the two are gonna kind of pull the line in that direction. Okay, I hope you've learned something in this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks!